Okay, so another one out of my book that I'm going to show you how to make. I'm going to show you how to make the donkey. Okay, so you are going to want your three different colors. You're going to want a gray color. You can choose to use a darker gray if you'd like. You're going to need a black color and you're going to need a white color. Okay, so you're going to need these three colors. You can use scrap yarn. You can use any 24 peg loom you want. Okay, and I mean any. You can use the 3 8 you can use the 4th inch, you can use a 5 8 you can use um, the 3 16 half inch gauge, any half in any 24 peg loom you want. For me today, I am going to use the 3 8 inch gauge limb, okay, for my donkey. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the head, okay, and that's going to be starting off with your gray color. This is going to be a nice soft gray, so um, I know I'm going to have to be kind of delicate and careful with it, okay. Alright, so what it says to start off with now is to draw a string cast on flat 24 pegs. Okay, so we're going to just weave in and out. And then we're going to head back the other direction and that'll get your cast on in. And then it says that you're going to knit rows one through eight. So you're just gonna knit for eight rows after you get your cast on done. Okay. There. Okay, we got our cast on done. And now what we want to do is to knit for eight rows, okay? So I'm going to tell you to go ahead and pause the video and knit back and forth for eight total rows, okay? And then we'll be ready to do our nice big ears, our fun ears, okay? So pause the video, complete your eight rows, and we'll come back and we'll do the ears. So, we have knitted our nine rows, as you can see, I mean, our eight rows, excuse me, our eight rows, as you can see. Okay, and so what you want to do now is you're going to do the, your ear row, which is row nine. So what you're going to do is you're going to knit eight. So here's one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight. All righty. So here is where it says ear. And I'm going to pull out my stitch markers here. Pull out a few. Okay. So what you're looking for when you look at any of my patterns is a um, B O L B. On the ear, we have knit four for two rows, increase, knit four, increase, knit five, knit six for eight rows, change to black, knit five, knit four, knit three, knit two, change to white, knit three, knit four, knit five, knit six for eight rows, and then decrease, knit two together, knit two, decrease, knit two together and knit four for four rows, B-O-L-B. -B. Knit two together four times. Okay. It didn't specify whether it was pegs one or two. It means you're going to bring all of them back. So you need to get you four. So this is easy right here. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and put a stitch marker in all four of those pegs. Now when I wrote this book, I wasn't very kind to my purchasers when it came to this and explaining that 
Using stitch markers for this ear section business is actually really helpful, particularly when you're not used to seeing what you're doing. And so now I try to show it in all my videos, but I personally, when I go to do this on my own, I don't do this. All right. So because it's kind of a long ear and we want to be able to connect it while we're going, what I'm going to do is do a knit the last stitch, slip the first stitch. And I'm going to put a little stitch marker on every slipped stitch. Okay? So here's how this goes. So you're going to knit the four over. So this is going to count as row one. Okay. We're going to be working just over these four stitches. All right. Okay. Now. I'm going to slip that first stitch, knit the last stitch. Now you can knit it straight out as I say it in the book. All right. So I'm just going to be working over those four pegs. And every time I slip a stitch, I'm going to put a stitch marker. All right. So there is row two. Now, it says knit four for two rows, then it says to increase one, and then knit four. One, two, three, and four. Now I'm going to put a stitch marker on that increase. Do not touch the original stitch in Here, or you will connect the middle of your ear, okay, to your bot, to your uh, head. So do not touch that. If you think it's going to be easier to make sure that you're not touching it, put a stitch marker in your way, okay. Don't touch it. You'll screw up if you touch it, okay. That's me being nice. All right. So go ahead and increase, and then it says to knit. Five. So we're going to knit five. So there's one, two, three, four, and of course, five. All right. So here's how this works when you're slipping that last, that first stitch. You're going to take it under the stitch marker. And what that's going to do is give you a little bit more leeway to work in. Okay. Again, if you feel like you can't handle remembering this, don't touch this down here. Lift this up. Put your stitch marker down. Kind of gives you a reminder. Don't touch it. Just don't touch it. Okay? All right. Now I'm going to put a stitch marker on that increase here on the end. Okay. So I can bring it back when I'm doing rows. Okay, now, we now have a total of six stitches. Okay, so we've done our increase. Now we want to knit six for eight rows. So, um, you can just knit the six for eight rows, or you can do the slip the first stitch, knit the last stitch of every row. So here is row one. Okay, I'm going to slip that up under there. Okay, I'm going to put a stitch marker on that stitch that I slipped. And go ahead and put one on here too. I'm fixing to slip this one anyway. All right. You want to keep count. If you need to get a row counter, you can. Okay? Now, this is a row one that we just finished. Now we're going to do row two.
This will be row four. Okay, so I'm going to tell you to pause the video and complete four more rows, always putting a stitch marker on your slipped stitches. Okay, so this is row four. So complete four more rows. Okay, like doing just like we did here. So complete four more rows, and then we will come back and I think we start changing colors. Yes. Okay, so pause the video, complete four more rows, and then we'll come back and work at the very tip top of the ear and start working our way back down. Okay, as you can see, I have done my nine rows. Okay, and what you're going to do is you're going to knit over eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, there's time for you shouldn't be working so early in the morning. I got halfway through the first year and realized I hadn't pressed the record button. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do the first half of the year over here. But it'll finish off the second half of the year. Okay, where it belongs. Okay, so you're going to see a shift. Be aware, you're going to see a shift. I'll be doing the other ear the front half over here when it normally gets done here okay just letting you know but this is what you're after this is what you're doing right here okay you're doing this little ear right here all right so I'm going to show you how to do the front half and you're going to work in the next four stitches as you can see these white stitches here which is what you finish with okay so you knit over eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you see you're working your ear in the next four stitches, as you can see. Okay, but I'm going to show you how to start working the ear since I missed filming it. You'll see me finish the ear on the correct ear when I hit the white, when I hit the change to color to white. Okay, so you'll hit me, you'll see me hit the second half of the ear when it gets to this part. Okay, but we'll need to get the first half of the year filmed. Okay, so I'm going to be doing it in the next slot, which is where the next ear goes. The ears are right beside each other, absolutely right beside each other. Okay, so what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to, when you see ears show up, you want to see if there is a B-O-L-B -B there. And there is. And it's going to be for all four stitches. It doesn't specify it will when it comes to the legs of the body so when it specifies okay if it doesn't specify it's meaning all the stitches you've been working on okay so go ahead and put your stitch markers in here okay so what it says to do is to knit four for two rows. So here's row one. And I'm going to be doing a slip on my first stitch, knit on my last stitch. But you do not have to do this. You knit just straight forward. Okay. So... I'm going to be putting a stitch marker on that stitch. I'm going to go ahead and knit row two. All right, there we go. Two rows knitted. All right, so I'm going to put a stitch marker on that. All right. Now, what it says to do is it says to increase, which is where you're going to wrap the next available peg. But here's where it can get funky. You don't want to have to get confused and suddenly toss over that bottom original loop. If you do, you connect the middle of your ear with your head. All right. So we're going to increase that and knit four, like it says. And we will put a stitch marker on the increase. Okay. And then knit the bottom loop over. Okay. And put a stitch marker on the increase. Okay, again, it's 
So you make sure that you don't toss that original lip out. Put a stitch marker in the way. It'll remind you. So it says to increase and then knit five. So here's one, two, three, four, and five. Now when you get to these, what you're going to do when you go to slip and knit your way back, you want to take the working yard up under the stitch marker. And what that does is allows you a little bit more room to work. Okay. And we'll put a stitch marker over here. All right. So now it's time to work our knit six for eight rows. Okay. So you want to put a slip and every slip you do, you want to put a stitch marker. Okay. So I'm slipping right here. That increase had a stitch marker put on it. This is going to be row one of eight. All right. So I'm getting along. Okay. I'll take it up under. Around. There's a stitch marker on that stitch. That's row one. will be row two. So and pull it up out there. And put a stitch marker. Continue this process for a total of eight rows when knitting six. So we've already done Two rows, you want to do six more rows. Okay, so pause the video and get six more rows done. And when we come back, we'll be ready to change colors. Okay, as you can see, I've done my eight rows and now I'm ready to change colors. So I'm going to be changing over to black. I'm going to be doing a magic knot. All right, so put that down to the bigger base. Cut that. that. I can't pull it no more. Snap it. Okay. And then we'll go in and you loosen those up. Because you end up tightening them up when you do that. Okay. Yeah, it says to change color. Once I get to the top of the black, I'm actually going to stop the video. And then we're going to move over to the first ear and show you how the white finishes up. Okay, so keep that in mind. It's all the same. Both ears are done exactly the same as you can see if I'm able to do this method. Okay, and then we can just pick up right from there. All right, so what it says to do is it says to knit five so change color knit five so here's one two three four five then it says to knit four one, two, three, four. Then it says to knit three, and you always start off with the one you finished with. One, two, three. Then it says to knit two. So here's one, 
too. And this is where you change color and this is where we're going to flip over to the video that shows you finishing up the first ear and then where to start on the next ear. Okay, and that way you um, are kind of back on track here. So I showed you the beginning of the ear and I kind of explained what happened here. Okay, so um, there you can see where the adjustment is, okay. So go ahead and uh, keep watching. It'll switch over to the video that actually finishes up this first ear, okay, and then tells you to go in and repeat the ear we just did, okay? Okay, so I'm going to be changing to white. And I do have to cut my colors again. And I'm not using a, a fuzzy white for this. Okay. I'm mostly using a bunch of scrap yarn. This is how I use up my scrap yarn and make a bunch of stuffed animals. Okay, I'm just going to gently pull that. Okay. Cut the excess ends off. Okay. So then we're going to start with a peg that we just finished with, and we're going to knit three, knit four, knit five, knit six for eight rows. And when we get to the knit six for eight rows is when we're going to start adding our stitch markers back on. So here we're going to knit three, one, two, three. Then we're going to start with the peg we finished with. We're going to knit four. So here is one two, three, four, and then we're going to knit five, so here's one, two, three, four, and five, and then we're going to knit six, four, eight rows. So here's row one. Okay. And I'm going to get those over. Okay. So here's where we want to start adding our stitch markers back. So what you want to do is you want to find the closest one to the peg. All right, and you're going to pull it back. And take the stitch marker off. Okay. So then you're going to slip that first stitch, knit your way over. Knit two together. So that's going to be your second row. Okay, then you're going to find your first one over here. You're going to add it back. And this is going to be row three. Okay, this is where you start adding back. Then you find the next one. This will be row four.
then you add a row, add one of these. This will be row five. stitch. This will be row six. And this is row Seven. says you're going to decrease. So, here is row 8. Okay. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to pick that stitch up and decrease it over. Lift up your stitch over here, put it on there, and yes, you'll be knitting three over. That's keeping everything still being attached as you go along. Again, you don't have to do this method. You can just do it the way it is written. This is just so you don't have to sew. Okay. over here. say to knit four for four rows. Okay. Because we kept on slipping, this is actually your first row. So you're going to put that on there. And you can take this off because you don't need it. So we've already done our first row of four. So this is going to be row two and bring that take that out and then it says that you have two more rows and I don't have any more stitch markers so row three Bring your original loops back. So, I'm going to bring your original loops back on all pegs. And if you're working with the same fluffy yarn, be careful. It's a yarn you have to baby, but it's well worth the softness of the garments you make. There we go. 
So you bring your original loop back on all the stitches and then you knit the two stitches together four times. Okay. So one, two. And there's your second one, two. And here's your third one. One, two. And here's your fourth one. One, two. There we go. You should have one ear complete. There's what you do. Go and pull it out. There is your ear. See. Okay. So at this point, you're going to change up your color again back to gray. So it says change color, and then you're going to repeat the ear that you just did. Okay. So. You cut your white wrap around okay okay Yeah. Here's where you're going to start your other ear. So you're going to repeat the exact same thing we did right here in the next four slots. Okay? So pause the video and get that much done. Okay. So I have finished my second ear. Right, as you can see. And I've reattached my gray, just like I did with my first ear. And then I'm going to finish knitting my way to the end of the row. Okay. Then it'll get really e easy again after this. So this is your hard row. Okay, from here, you're going to do six rows of knit back and forth. Okay. So you're just going to go in and knit for six rows and then we'll be ready to do our next section which isn't quite an internal decrease and it's a multiple decrease and I'll show you how that works. Okay. Let's go ahead and pause the video and complete your six rows and we'll be ready to go and do row 16. Okay, so I have completed my six rows. As you can see, there was my ears and I've completed my six rows. And there's what you should have when you actually pull your drawstring together. Okay. So at this point, it says to decrease, knit two together four times, knit 12, decrease, knit two together four times. What does that mean? If you have a decrease of four times, you're going to need to lift up seven stitches and place two stitches on four pegs. Okay, so here's one, two three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. You're going to move over here and put that seventh stitch on peg eight. Okay. And then 
you're going to put two stitches on the next peg. Two stitches on the next peg. And two stitches on the next peg. All right. And you'll see that you've decreased. So you'll be knitting the two together four times. Okay. You can do the same thing on the other side. Lift up seven stitches and place two stitches on four pegs. So here's one, here's two, three, four, five, six, seven and you place seven on the eighth one right there and then two on here and then two here try not to drop the stitch all right and two here Okay, now, as you can see, you have four stitches with two stitches on them. Okay, so you've decreased. Now you need to knit the two stitches together four times. So here's, here's one. Here's two. Here's three, and here is four. Like I did lose a stitch. So hard to see when you do. Say you drop one like that. stitch up, put it back where it goes. The quicker you catch it, the easier it is to fix. You saw me just correct that. Okay, then it says to knit 12. So one, two, three, four, five, To make an adjustment while I'm sitting here in this pattern. It's not exactly 12, it's 8. Okay. Because you should have a total of 16 pegs. When you're done, let's see if that's accurate. So there's knit two together four times. Okay. 
All right. So, one more error there. Yeah. So, you're going to knit 8 instead of 12. All right. I went over this as much as I could, but when you have 50 patterns, it's easy to miss errors and that kind of thing, which is kind of the reason why I'm going over and filming every single pattern in the book, explaining how to read it, that kind of thing, and uh, that kind of thing. So if you're ever doing one of my patterns in my book and you find an error, please let me know. I'll be glad to go in and fix it, okay? Right now I have a series of errors that I have written down in here to go in and do, but when I'm done with this book and filming everything, I should have it right where I want it, okay? And then I'm going to start another one. <laughs> okay, so we finished row 16, and what we want to do is two rows of knit. So two rows of knit, okay, and, um, God, this yarn is slick. So two rows of knit, and then we're going to change to white, and then we're going to... Do our nose, okay? change over to our white color. Again, I'm using a lot of scrap yarn for this kind of stuff. Um, these projects done um, on these small looms like this, you can use up a lot of your scrap yarns to make stuffed animals, particularly on these 3 8 to smaller gauges. You can do a lot. Okay. So, here we go. All right, we've done our two rows. Now, we need to switch to our white, which is right here. Okay. Tell you what, the dogs are barking a lot tonight in the neighborhood. Okay, and you want to do that as tight as possible, get it down to the base, and then cut your gray, because we're going to do our magic knot, alright, so that we can cut it real short. Okay, so once we get our color changed, then it says we want to knit for two rows, I believe it says, 19 and 20, yeah. So. We want to knit for two rows, okay? Alright. So, we want to knit for two rows, and then we're going to do a nostril area, alright? So, should get a little smoother with more textured yarn. Okay, so do two rows of white once you got your color changed. And then you're going to do a row with a nostril. And then you'll do two more rows. Okay. Row one. And here we go. I'm doing row 
Okay. Okay, next we're on row 21. So, what it says to do is to knit four. You're going to go one, two, three, four. Then it says nostril, and it says to knit two for six rows, bring original loops back, and knit two together two times. Okay, so. When you see that B-O-L-B, -B, just stitch markers in the next two stitches, okay? Alrighty. So then we're going to go back and forth. So we're going to get across these two six rows. So here's row one. Two, three, four, five, and six. to bring the original loops back, take those off, knit two together two times, and one, and two. Okay, then it says to knit four, so one, two, three, And it says to repeat the nostril again. So, mark you out two stitches. So here's one. And two. Okay. You go six rows. So there's row one. Two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Then we're going to bring the original loops back, knit two together two times, one, and two. Then it says to knit four. So one, two, three, and four. All right, that completes row 21. At this point, you want to knit rows 22 and 23, draw string, bind off. Okay, so we're gonna knit for two rows, and then we're going to draw string, bind off, and then we will be finished with the head and ready to start on the body. Okay.
there's row one, and here is row two. And then we'll draw string bind off. you along the table and I go to the opposite side, toss the bottom loop over, pull through. All right, so you're going to draw a string, bind off all the stitches. So go ahead and pause the video and get that done. And you want to sew up the snout, close off the back of the head. And if you did it the original way that I wrote on the ears rather than the new technique, then what you'll want to do is sew up your ears, okay? And then you'll want to add your eyes. And I'll show you how to go about that, but I'm going to go ahead and start right into the body because I'm really trying to get the most important information out on how to knit. Okay, let's go ahead and pause your video, get done with your head. When we come back, we'll be ready to start on the body. Okay, so if you finished your head, should look something like this. Here's your little ears. Fun little ears. There's your little nostrils. That kind of thing. You want to sew up the snout area and a little bit past the gray, but not by much. Close up the back of your head. And what you want to do is you want to put your eyes right at the base of where your decrease area is, you may have to try to draw a line up, and where the ears are right through here. Okay, so line up with the bottom of the ears at the base of your decrease section. Okay, and that's where you want to put your eyes at, all right? And if you're using safety eyes, you want to go ahead and stall them now before um, adding stuffing and that kind of thing. Once you add those, go ahead and add your stuffing, and then you can scent your eyes. And if you don't know what I'm talking about there, I will show you that at the end of the video. But if you have safety eyes, go to the base of your decrease, go all the way up to line up with the bottom of the eye. You do that on both sides, okay? And then try to make sure you got it even. You need to go up a little higher, you can. But you're lining it with the bottom of the ear the bay and lined up with the decrease section. Okay, right there, right? Now, because I want to progress on, we're going to start on the body, okay? So here is how this works. Now, you do a drawstring cast on, and if you're using this kind of yarn, be careful when you draw string, as this yarn is kind of delicate. Okay, but you can use normal gray yarn. You haven't got to use this specialty stuff. I'm just used to using up my scrap for this kind of thing. Okay, so drawstring cast on 24, and it says circular. And it says to start off with gray. Okay, so we're going to do our drawstring cast on, and after the drawstring cast on, it says rows one through five to knit. Okay, this is working from the back end of your donkey to the front end. Okay, that is how this works. All 
Alrighty, now, got our drawstring cast on. You're going to knit for five rows. Alright, so go ahead and knit around for five rows. And then we'll come back and start row six, which has your leg in it. And I'm going to show you how to do this without having to sew. And then I'll tell you the easy version if you want to just sew it up. Okay. Alright, so pause the video, get your five rows done, and we'll come back and do um, row six. And um, when I show you a leg row, I'll tell you to remember it. Where it is in the video, you may want to write it down when I start the leg because I'm not going to film this anymore because your front legs and your back legs work exactly the same. And I, I'm not going to show it twice and I'm only going to show how to do the leg once. So keep that in mind. Mark it. The row 6 is the same thing as row 22. Okay, you're repeating it. So you're going to get through majority of the body after I get done with row six, okay? Because it's pretty easy. And it's after row um, six, you have row seven through 21, then row 22, which is um, row six. And then we come back and we do row, um, looks like 23. And I have miss written my rows. Don't ask me how that happened. Okay, so we'll come back and we'll go to what it says in the book is row 22, but it's actually row 23. Alright, so pause the video and get your five rows done and we'll come back and do our leg row. Okay, I've done my five rows and I'm ready to do row six. Please take a time to write down the time frame of this video so that you can refer back to it when doing row 22, okay? Now, what row 6 says, it starts out with leg, in parentheses, and you're using 5 stitches, 15 rows, change to black, knit 5 or 6 rows, change to gray, knit 5 or 15 rows, bring original loops back on pegs 1, and five it specifies on this one so we're bringing the original loops back on page one and five we're making a note of that so you're going to put a stitch marker on peg one and five so one two three four five all right now if you do not want to do this technique where requires a no sewing option and you don't mind sewing you just follow it as is knit five for 15 rows one two three four five so forth 15 rows back and forth over these five rows on the very these five pegs then you change to black and knit five for six rows then change to gray and knit five for 15 rows okay bring your original lips back on page one and five, knit two together, knit three, knit two together. Okay? That's if you don't want to sew. I mean, if you want to sew. If you don't mind sewing and you want to sew, just do it as written. If you do not want to sew, here's the trick. All right. It's kind of like the ears. It's up to you whether you want to sew or not. All right? Okay, so we're doing row one right now. So this is row one. For every slip, you add a stitch marker. For every Okay, so you're going to knit your last stitch, slip your first stitch. Alright, so I'm going to put a stitch marker on it because I'm slipping it. And then I'm knitting over. This is row two. And keep in mind, if you choose to do this method, what you're doing is you're keeping these legs attached. And you're also 
keeping it where the seaming for it is very solid. Right. So here is row three. Alright, you're going to do this for 15 rows. Okay. When we get to the black, it'll change up a little bit because it says six rows. You're going to do three rows like this, and then you'll start adding your chains back in, which is what these stitch markers are doing. There are your chains. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and complete 15 rows. This is row four. Okay. So 15 rows back and forth, and we'll show the change of color. Okay, we've done our 15 rows. You see a lot of them little stitch markers. It looks like a mess, but it will save you time. Okay. So at this point, it says to change up to black. We're not going to cut our gray yarn. Okay, there's no need to cut it. But you're going to switch right back to it. Okay. So all we're going to do is we're going to do a regular half knot and we're going to take it down to the base of our color and then we're going to just do another half knot, okay? If you want to cut it down a little, you can, okay? Problem with this fuzzy yarn. All right, now we're going to be slipping again, okay? And we're doing three rows of black. And we'll start adding our stitch markers back in. Now, if you're doing this the other way, it's six rows, okay? All right, so we're slipping. Honestly, I feel like going ahead and adding that. I wouldn't normally. But because we want it black when we add so we don't have an offset, that's why you're going to do that. Okay. From when you start changing colors. So there's row two. We're going to start on row two. and row three. I'm not going to add a stitch marker back this time. All right. Now, I'm going to find the closest stitch marker to this peg which is this one right here. I'm going to add that back, okay? Just like that. If you don't want to chain down the side of your leg, I suggest you purl it to two together. If you want to chain down the side of the leg, knit the two together. I don't really want a chain down the side of the leg, so I'm actually going to purl the two together. And that is how it changes up. Okay. So we're going to just pull the two together. I'm going to find the closest chain over here. Now remember this is four. And what we're fixing to do is row five. So we're going to slip that stitch. We're going to knit it over. is row five. And then we have one more. We're finding our closest stitch holder to the loom. It's going to have gray on it. 
We want to add it back. There it is. The benefit of these little things. And this is excuse me. Let me knit both these together. Curl both of them together, excuse me, I'm doing curling. Depends on my mood. Sometimes I don't care and sometimes I do. Alright, there we go. Alright, now you're gonna slip that first stitch, you're gonna knit your way over and then you'll purl the two together if you don't want to see uh, if you don't want to chain down the side of your legs. If you do, then just knit the two together. So I'm going to purl those two together. Good enough. Okay. Now I'm going to change it back. I'm going to find my next closest stitch. And at this point, you're changing back to your gray. This is where I'm just going to snip it, knot it, and cut it a little shorter. Okay, so this is where I'm going to knit it across, purl it together, and I'm just going to finish up until I'm down to my last two stitch holders. And that's to bring the original loops back, okay? Or if you are following the pattern exact, just go ahead and knit your 15 rows, okay? Alright, so now we're going to pull those kind of in the middle because what you're doing is closing off your leg now. And what you can do is work those little knots into the middle and not have to worry about them later. Okay, so then you're going to slip that first stitch, knit your way over, and you can either choose to purl the two together or knit the two together. It is your preference. If you want to chain down the side, knit two together. If you want it smoother, purl the two together. It is entirely up to you. But you keep looking for the ch next closest to the limb. Okay? Let's go ahead and pause the video. Work your way back until you are going to the last two stitch markers. And we shall go from there, okay? Okay, you see I'm down to my last two stitch markers, but you'll see that my yarn is over here. Just go ahead and slip and knit your way over. Even if you don't have anything to pull up, it's okay. All right, knit your way over. All right, because what you're going to do now you're going to bring your original lips back on page one and five. Take those off. All right. Then you're going to knit the two together. So you're going to knit the two together. One, two, and then knit your three in between. One. Two, three, and knit your two together. What did you just create? Look at that leg. You haven't even stretched the stitches out. Look at that. No sewing. You see that? None. You've gotten a little appendage already there. See? See how easy that is? Alright. So you've just finished your leg. And then what it says to do is to purl 14. This purling is important. You can knit, but the purl line is going to show you where to sew on your tail. Okay. So you're going to purl 14. So here, one. Mm. 
x seven eight nine ten You should have five stitches left. One, two, three, four, five. And you do. Okay. You're going to go back in the video. There I told you to put your markers out. And you're going to put your original loops back stitches in. On peg one and five. Right there. Those are your original loops back stitches. You're going to go back in the video. And you're going to do the exact same thing you did here. Remember this row. Because you're going to finish this. Then you're going to just knit around and around and around for rows 7 through 21. And that's 15 rows, 14, 15 rows. So after you do your leg, you're going to do four to fifteen row, fourteen to fifteen rows, and then you're going to do this leg row again. Mark your time frame on this so that you can come back to it. Because I'm not going to film it. All right. So pause the video, complete your other leg, knit for fourteen to fifteen rows, complete this row right here again with the legs, then. When we come back, we'll be ready to do the next row, which has your neck area where it's going to bend and lift, okay? It's an area where I have to correct what row we're on. It's going to technically be row 23, but in your book, it'll say row 22. So two row 22s. All right. When you're done with that, we'll come back and do the neck area, okay? And we'll finish up the body. This will save a lot of time. All right. So pause the video, get the huge chunk of your body done, and then we'll be ready to start on the neck area. Okay. Okay. So as you can see, I have finished my back legs, my body, and my front legs, which you can see right here. Now, my suggestion is, because it can be a little difficult at times, is when you get a little further along, go ahead and sew up these back legs. If you didn't do this method, stuff it and close off your back end. It makes it a little easier um, when uh, going in and uh, messing with that, okay? so. We have completed our legs here and our legs here. And we are now ready for, what are we ready for? Ready for what should be row 23, but it shows up as a row to double row 22. So we'll say row 22B. <laughs> it's your second row 22, which I don't know why I did that. Okay, so here's what it says to do. It says to knit for one, two, three, four. Then it says to wrap and turn. Then it says to knit eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. And it says to wrap and turn. Then it says to knit seven, wrap and turn, knit six, wrap and turn, knit five, knit wrap and turn, knit four, wrap and turn, and knit four, wrap and turn, stop. Then it says to knit four, knit two together, knit five, knit two together, knit six, knit two together, knit seven, knit two together, knit eight, knit two together, knit nine, knit two together, knit seventeen, start working flat. Okay? So 
Let's do that. So knit seven. Wrap and turn. Knit six. Wrap and turn. Working on a flatter surface for me is not my norm, so I get tangled easier. Okay, so knit five, wrap and turn, knit four. Wrap and turn, and then it says to knit four. So one, two, three, four. Okay, now it says to knit four, knit two together. So we are going to start with peg we finished with. And if you kind of don't want there to be a even a minuscule hole, you can go ahead and wrap and turn that knit four knit two together knit five knit two together Six. Knit two together. Knit seven. Knit two together. Knit eight. Knit two together. And if you kind of want to avoid a hole on this side, you can wrap and turn that next peg. You just need to knit both together when you go around. Okay. You can German short row this. You can do any short row method you want, um, just so long as you're keeping up. So then it says to knit nine, knit two together. Okay, then it says to knit 17 and start working flat. I think there might be an error. Let me make sure. Yeah, there's an error. It should only be knit 7. Certain patterns have more errors in it than others. Some are just perfect like that. Turkey. Okay. So after this point, you knit those two together and you knit seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Start working flat. So for two rows, you're going to work flat. So this is your new starting point. Mark it, do whatever you need to do. Okay. 
So at this point, I'm going to just knit my way around and do two rows because it says row 23 and 24, which when corrected will be 24 and 25. to come back over here and we're going to knit back the other way for row two. What we're prepping for is a multiple decrease. All right, and what that's going to do is it's going to create an area that's going to lift the head up. So you're, you're doing an angle to create a chest and lifted neck. That is the goal here. Okay. And that's how you do it. You decrease on the back end and you do a short row increase on the front end. And what that does is create an angle that you need to complete this. Okay. All right. While doing those two rows, what it'll have done is create a break in there where you should be able to decrease with a little bit more ease. Okay, so then it says to knit two together, decrease, knit two together two times. So Um, you basically lift up three I'm going to knit the two together two times. You're going to lift up three and place two stitches on the last end two. Okay, so you should have two empty. All right. Then you're going to knit, it says 16, let's see if that's right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, 16. Okay, it is right. All right, you're going to lift up three stitches, place a stitch on that last one to make two, and a stitch here to make two. And then you're going to place that last one right in there. It is going to stretch it a little, but that's okay. All right. So then you're going to knit two together two times. Okay. So decrease, knit two together two times. And you should lack four and be down to 20 stitches. Okay, then it says you're going to repeat this process again. You're going to decrease and knit two together two times. All right, so you're going to pick up three stitches just like we've been doing. Place stitch on that last one and two stitches here. which will decrease you two more times. Knit the two stitches together two times. All right, then it says to knit 12. Let's make sure that's right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I don't 
that's right. Okay. And what you're going to do is pick up three stitches like we've been doing and place a stitch on that end peg and place two on the next two stitches. And then knit two together. Okay, we have now created our neck area that has now done its angle, and you will have to sew up your neck at this point. Okay, so we've created a angle, and you can see your body developing. Might I suggest you go ahead and you stuff your legs here, so that all you have to do is stuff your body. It makes it a lot easier. Okay, all right, so um, what it says to do now is to knit rows 27 through 34, and this is going to change up and be knit rows 28 through 35. And what that means is, okay, you're going to knit for eight rows, back and forth, and then you're just going to bind off, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to knit back and forth for eight rows. So pause the video, back and forth for eight rows, and then we'll be ready to bind off. So pause the video and get that much done. Okay, you can see your body working up right here, including the chest and the neck area. At this point, you want to just bind off and it's no special bind off because it's the top of your neck okay so um go ahead and pause the video and get your bind off done and then at this point we're ready to knit the tail and then we will knit mane and then it's time to assemble at this point, you could go ahead and assemble. You sew up your neck area. Um, my suggestion is to stuff those legs and most of the back of the body before you sew up the neck. Sew up the neck, then finish stuffing, then set up your head, and um, you can go ahead and uh, sew on the head, at the top of the neck. Okay. And um, then you can just add the finishing touches with the tail and the mane, which I can show you how to do. All right, so pause the video, finish this up, and we'll be ready to come back and I'll show you how to make the tail, okay? But as you can see, you have your section here that will need to be sewn up. My suggestion is to go ahead and stuff the legs before you sew that up stuff most of the back of the body and then you should be ready to um, do the uh, sew on the head okay so you can go ahead and do that if you feel comfortable with this all right but I will try to show how to assemble this but because you're doing so many legs and everything and all the appendages for the most part in place there's really not much sewing involved okay I think it's a total of you know a handful of seams all right so go ahead and pause the video bind off if you feel good about what you got go ahead and finish up the body and stuff it and sew it up and then stuff the head and add the eyes and sew it on to the body so that all you're ready to do is sew on the tail and the mane okay so pause the video get that much done and we'll come back Okay, so I'm going to kind of show you what I've done here. Um, you can see that I've already stuffed my legs and my body, and I've closed up the back of my head. And you can see you have a cute little body here. Honestly, you can see that you can take this basic body and make a lot of different things if you want. I've also sewn my head. I've added my eyes. There's the base. There's the bottom of the ear. And you can see I've added my eyes. 
I've gone ahead and stuffed, but I have not cinched the eyes because I want to show you how to go in and cinch the eyes. Okay, so you're going to sew the head on to the body like that. All right. But you're missing a couple of other areas. Okay, so we need to do the mane and the tail. Again, I'm trying to focus really hard on getting my loom stuff done. I'm not going to focus as much on sewing. Alright, so we're going to start with the tail and we're going to go and we're going to um, do the tail and you're going to use 10 pegs flat and you're going to start off with black and you're going to draw a string cast on. Right. Some reason I put circular down. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Um, which obviously you can't do circular unless you got <laughs> a ten peg loom. Okay. So go ahead and draw a string cast on. You're black. Okay. Moving along. To do the tail. This should not take very long. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to um, purl for seven rows. Okay, so you want to go in and you want to purl back and forth for seven rows, or you can do a knit a row, purl a row, but you are wanting to do seven rows worth. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video and complete your seven rows of purl, and then we'll be ready to come back and start the next section. Okay. And we're really working our way down. Go ahead and sew the head onto your um, donkey. And I can show you how to cinch the eyes at the end of the video. Alright, so go ahead and pause the video. Knit your, I mean, purl your seven rows. Alright, and then when we come back, we'll get to row eight. Okay, I've done my seven rows of purl. And now what I want to do is for row 8 it says to knit and then it says we're going to need to change color to our gray. So obviously we've been doing the tip of the Okay, so now what it says to do is we need to change our color get that and um, we're gonna need the black anymore so we are gonna want to cut it we're gonna try to do a fisherman's knot or a magic knot as they call it but this yarn is kind of finicky on that and so you can't put a lot of stress on it so I will do the best I can, but if you're working with regular yarn, which is kind of what I worked with when doing my original, um, there, okay, I think that does it, that way you can cut it kind of short, okay, so, um, It can be a little finicky when you're working with this kind of yarn. I had fun when I was doing my X Loom um, Elephant, which is where this is scrap yarn from. Okay, so we changed to gray and it says to decrease. Okay, so we're going to decrease 
knit the two together. One, two. Then it says to knit six, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, then you're going to decrease over and knit two together. So here's one and two. That's row nine. Then it says to repeat the decrease. You're going to go in, you're going to take that stitch, and you're going to move it over one, and you're going to knit the two stitches together. And it says you're going to knit four, so here's one, two, three, four. And you're going to decrease again. And knit the two stitches together. Okay, so we have completed that, which is row 10. Now we're going to go rows 11 through 21, which looks to be about 10 rows, 10, 11 rows, and then you're going to just bind off, okay? Well, the bind off is the same as you did with the neck. So go ahead and pause the video. Go back and forth for 10 to 11 rows. Go ahead and bind off and your tail is done. So what we'll be doing next is um, going in and doing the main. And that'll be the last thing we're doing with our loom. And it's going to be completely in black and it's really simple. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video complete your tail and then we'll come back and do the main. Okay, so here's my little tail and it's up to you if you want to sew it up to the back, but you're going to kind of sew it up gathered anyway. And um, how you want to do that is you want to find the back center. Let me pull that up a little. You want to find the back center of your body which I find is best to line it up there and line it up to sew it onto the purled line of the body. Okay, so you have the nice purled line. Gave you a line to work from. Okay, so that's how you want to sew on the tail. Now, we are progressing on to the mane, which I'll explain how to sew that on and how to get that going. Okay, so it says the main is 24 pegs flat black. So what you're going to do is um, draw string cast on 24 pegs. One, two, three. Let's pull that down some. Okay, so drawstring cast on 24 pegs flat. All right. Okay. So we've woven all that in now. And then we go in and work our way back around. Then it says on row one to knit, on row two and three is where you're going to do a seed stitch for a few rows, okay? And this is going to go pretty quickly. Okay. 
Now, the first row is to knit. That's just to get you started. Okay. And the second row is to knit and purl all the way around. Okay. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to knit and purl your way around. So here's knit, purl, all the way around. So knit one, purl one, all the way around. So go ahead and pause the video, knit one, purl one all the way around, and then we will do the second row of a two row repeat. So this is your first row of a two row repeat. We'll do the second row of a two row repeat, and then you'll know to um, repeat, to finish up doing rows four through six, and repeating rows two and three over and over, and I do believe this ends up being a kind of um, garter stitch appearance. Okay, um, looks like seed stitch to see it written, but it's actually a garter stitch when you're knitting flat. Okay, so knit one, purl one, all the way around. Pause the video, get that much done. Okay, so we finished our row, and now we are doing row three, which is purl one, knit one okay all the way around so purl one knit one this is row two of a two row repeat okay so go ahead and pause the video and complete that and then what you want to do is repeat these two rows until you have a total of six rows and then you're going to do a normal bind off like you did for the neck area finish and the tail. And then we should be ready to complete assembling the donkey. Okay, so go ahead and continue this purl one knit one. Then you're going to go back to row two and you're going to do knit one purl one, which is row four, and then you're going to do row three, which is purl one, knit one all the way around, which is row five. Then you're going to go back up to row two and do knit one, purl one for row six. And then you're going to bind it off. And that will give you your mane for your donkey. Pause the video, get that much done. Okay, so we have our donkey pretty much assembled and I used my white to sew on the head because this yarn isn't real great so I'm going to um, sewing so um, what I'm going to show you is the last two things now if you're using a different yarn the face will look different um, it'll probably look more like a, a donkey so what we're going to do is we're going to Go right below the eye, okay, and send it through. Then we're going to go in and we're going to go and find and send the needle right below the other eye. Try to get as close to the eye as you can possibly get. I know there's washers in there and that can be difficult. Okay, so you send the needle through and pull it. Really pull it. You can see it's starting to pull in. So then you're going to take and send the needle through. And you're going to go to the top of the eye as close as possible. Okay. As close as you can get. And sometimes that's difficult with the washers and that. Okay. And then you're going to pull tight there. Okay. This is doing is cinching the eyes. It's going to make them stand out and make it look like the head has more shaping. All right, then you're going to send it through and send it back the other direction. 
pull it and you can see that the eyes start to look like they're set more into the head and that is the idea okay then you're going to um, send it back through the back of the neck as you finish off and pull okay move your eyelids around and you can see it gives it a lot more definition even when you're looking at it straight on into a, a side angle okay so I'm going to take advantage of my white yarn that I have here and I want to try to sew on my mane okay and what you want to do is take advantage of your um, drawstring cast on and adjust it as needed so what you're going to do is you're just going to sew it down the head down the neck and attach it there okay and that will complete your donkey okay so um that is the last of it and that is how you make a donkey now when you're doing this um, because I'm so close what I may do is go and send it through to here to the base of the neck okay so that I can go ahead and start sewing it on so and you just take it and send it through and Send it through. And you just do that all the way up, send through, send through. And so you're going to send it through and do its thing all the way up. Okay. And that's its little mane, as you can see. And if you're working with this kind of yarn, trust me, you want to, um, what I use for most of this is more like a parfait. If you're using a parfait yarn, you're not going to be able to sew um, as easily because it's such a delicate yarn. Okay. You can send a normal yarn through it and it do pretty good actually. So, um. Go in and uh, I personally like to do it where I'm using up all the extras from my parts. I find it makes it more solid to do it that way. Now what I'll probably do is weave in and uh, knot that and take it in. But uh, the drawstring cast on is to assist in getting it where it needs to be but that is basically how you go in and you make you a donkey okay and that's from the book and honestly there's more errors than I like in that particular pattern and I do not know why So, there. Little donkey. It's got some fun fun mane going on I think um, but yeah you just weave it and sew it and weave it and sew it all the way around to the top of the head And 
you can do when you get up here is you can simply knot the two and then weave them in with your crochet hook. Okay. So when making stuffed animals, I always suggest you have a crochet hook to go in and weave in your sections. Okay, so. Okay. And that little bit of white. Okay. And then what you can do is you can go in and pull that through, pull that through, tighten it, and then take it out the back end and pull it through. You know, always just snip off the extra. Tell you what, this this little thing's got a little almost a little dorky personality going on here. It's kind of cute. Okay, so there you go. How to make a donkey.